Today we'll be talking on the power to marry right. The power to marry right. While you're still standing, oh, you sat down. Yeah, sorry, please just stand up a little. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please, while you're still standing, um, let's honor God as we read the word. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Um, we have the screen. If you have your Bibles, we can all uh, be upstanding as we read the word together. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Want to go? You know the Bibles. Okay, it's on the screen now. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Can we read together? You shall receive power without the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall have witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and also the uttermost part of the earth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word into our hearts. Father, even as we dissect your word this evening, we pray God that you brew through it and let your spirit begin to touch every one of us. Begin to break every yoke, cause deliverance in this place. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, power is key for our divine work here on earth. True. It's key for our divine work here on earth. When God created man from the beginning, when God created Adam, the first thing he told Adam was to have dominion, be fruitful, replenish the earth. I mean... God created us for authority and never was in his design, did he assign that man will fail in anything. When God was creating man, the picture of divorce was in there. The picture of um, battering was in there. The picture of homosexuality was in there. The picture of lesbianism was in there. Man was not corrupt. There was no porn. You know, man was not corrupt. God created man for dominion. But unfortunately, man fell. Somebody say man fell. When man fell, the desire of God again was to restore man back to that primary place of dominion. Because a lot of things started happen, happening in the human race. A lot of sins started coming in the human race that man lost dominion and authority. So God was trying to look for the best way for him to cause redemption to man. But unfortunately, the route he was going through, uh, the first route was that he needed to kill an animal so that the blood would be used as sacrifice. But unfortunately, the Bible told us that the blood of bulls were not enough. It was not adequate enough to redeem man. Despite the fact that there was blood of bulls, our sins were still accounted against us. And not just that there was redemption through the blood of bulls. Even man could not understand his primary aim of authority. It was such that authority was only given to just a few. People like Elijah. And once in a while, the Holy Spirit will appear and use men like them and go back. Authority was not a man. And God started planning, plotting. And how can I bring dominion? How can I cause this thing? One of the ways God would have done it was to take man to heaven and teach man what it means to have dominion on earth. Of course, in heaven, everyone has dominion. There is power, rulership. But if man goes there, man is not expected to come back. It's not possible for man to be going to heaven and coming back and all the stuff. But God taught it wise to send his son, Jesus Christ. And he decided to send Jesus to come on earth for two reasons. Number one, that Jesus will live on earth not until his hundred years but in few years Jesus' assignment was to teach us dominion that when we see Jesus how he lives we can live the way he lived here on earth Jesus came to tell us that it is possible to be God and to be man and he came to show us the nature of what we should live before he went to cross to die for our redemption that when he died for our redemption, 
that authority is sealed that anyone who call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved so the first assignment he did was that he visited the wedding and when he went there the oil the, the wine ran dry and he turned water into wine one of those days he met the Samaritan woman by the well and he said go call your husband and come here and the woman said I don't have any husband and he looked at the woman and said you have five husbands even the one now is not even your husband he said but this is the problem you are facing is because the water you are drinking is the water of the flesh and the flesh does not profit any man and that is the reason why a lot of us even in the church we are failing in marriage and relationship because the ideal of our christian work has been bastardized we live by the flesh we think is by the spirit True. we live by emotions we think is by the spirit True. so jesus came to show us the ideal that see by your flesh by your strength you will not prevail he saw the woman with all her beauty with all her catwalk with all her styles and the makeup and the Mary Kay. she was still failing the first husband she failed she blamed the man the second one she failed she blamed the man the third the fourth until the fifth and jesus said you are missing something you are drinking from the wrong well for i i have come to give you a living water that those that test from it will not test anymore you will not be looking for shortcuts how to satisfy yourself and here satisfaction does not come from that quarter he said there is a water i will give to you that when you drink from that water you will not test anymore yeah and you see the woman had to keep on marrying again and again because she thought that her satisfaction was dependent on a man mm. you know how many persons you ask many persons today many singles why do you want to get married because you see when i get married that man will fulfill a void in me mm. you see a man cannot give you peace because his peace is found in christ mm. So it is only God you can depend on for peace. No man can secure you because the man is not Christ. So when your reason for getting married is because you want someone that can satisfy you, you will keep on having limits in life. You will have stagnancy in life. You have failed marriages. You have failed relations because you see, you are going into marriage with the wrong mindset. Mm. It takes a positive mindset to build a positive marriage. Yeah. So the woman married and married again because she thought her satisfaction was in a husband. No matter how many years you are in marriage, only Jesus that can satisfy a man. Only Jesus that can satisfy a husband. Only Jesus. Your spouse cannot give you joy. No man can complete you because you are not half. Mm. When you were created, you were created completely in him. Mm. He made you whole. So you are not going to any marriage with a half heart because you are whole in Christ. Yeah. Do you understand that? So she came because she had married and married and she has seen through marriage that you see no husband can satisfy me. And there had to be an encounter. Because you see when you encounter Jesus, there is an empowerment that is bestowed on you that does not have limits. Mm. And so that was the kind of encounter Jesus was demanding from her. He said, you see, you have been thirsty for too long. Because you see, your husbands can't satisfy your thirst. No man can, can satisfy this. But here I am. The kind of husband that you should marry first before the human husband. That when you come into Kononia with me, when you have an intercourse with me, there are deposits that I come. Because you see, you cannot have encounter. Encounter is like sexual intercourse. Mm, mm. When you sleep with the Holy Spirit, you have intercourse. There are deposits that comes upon you. And when those deposits comes upon a man, your senses, your human senses is limited. But there is a supernatural sense that has no limits. Mm. And sometimes you cannot understand what you are seeing but you see because when you encounter him you marry him as your husband there is a witness in your spirit that even your flesh cannot understand it's only jesus that can satisfy mm. the bible says and you shall receive power, power after that the holy ghost so you see Power becomes the product when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. True. So you see, there is something you receive the Holy Ghost broods upon you. So even when you are dry, when you are in the wilderness, when it comes upon you, there is this kind
kind of power he says but you shall receive after so the holy ghost comes upon you so what comes to you after the holy ghost comes upon his power because you see you can't have encounter with his presence and not have his products Fire. but can you just bet can you just stay in his presence and it did not stop there he says after the Holy Ghost comes up now you shall be witnesses mm. so in other words when there is a supernatural empowerment upon a woman or a man your marriage becomes a witness to the world True. and can I tell you ladies especially listen don't just marry because you want to marry mm. marry because you understand that you are a woman created to fulfill a destiny mm. And that's why you were first created before marriage so you are understanding that oh you see when i was created when i have a relationship with the holy spirit there is a power that is bestowed on me to fulfill a destiny so when i am choosing i'm choosing a partner that will go on that journey to fulfill the destiny mm. you're not marrying by accident mm. you are married because the person who you are choosing is a companion for your destiny so the person must align so that the person can understand your journey to your mm. assignments emotions don't rule in the supernatural realm it's the holy ghost seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness every other thing shall, shall be added unto you. you what are you seeking first are you seeking first the first kiss in a relationship what are you seeking first are you seeking first are you seeking his kingdom in that marriage in that relationship or are you seeking for ice cream are you seeking the beers are you seeking for a beard gang is that what you are seeking for are you seeking for a man that has chest or are you seeking for the kingdom because if you seek for the kingdom every other thing shall be added forget what social media has taught you they taught you wrongly they are all crying secretly i did to go meet men of god for help but yet on social media they show lies and you are scrolling every day and say my wedding will be like this you are interested in the wedding not even the marriage you are interested in the wedding not even the covenant and that is why a lot of marriages even in the church they are failing today yes because your role models are people who have failed in the world true men who need help you are running to them for help mm. rather than meet your destiny helper that is jesus christ true. seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness that it is a trend does not mean that is of god mm. cohabiting is a trend does not mean that is of god lesbianism is a trend does not mean uh, everybody is doing it does not make it right mm. the truth must prevail in your life jesus mm. said i am the way the truth and the life mm. how to receive this power why do you need power why do, do you, you need, need power? power number for one for three, three things i think we just take only just take one today one. one for discernment mm. two for decree, decree. and three for downlessness so let's take it again one, one for, for discernment two for, for decree, decree and, and three for, for downlessness so the first is for discernment first corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 it said but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are not spiritually Design. the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god listen there was something that happened to me when i was single you know i had funny funny experiences and that's why discernment is something i i i can't sell people on i tell you see if you want to live the life and live the life of peace discernment is must be a natural weapon with you it must be something you must hold it's like a farmer carrying cutlass to farm mm. as a christian you must hold it as a tool for life because you see not everyone that comes to church comes in his original form there are counterfeits even in church mm. that is why i say church is not people say ah, i don't know my marriage but i i saw him in church i saw her in church it's not the venue that you marry it's the personality mm. true so beyond where you met the person who is the person mm. who is the person 
People marry the what and the where, but who is the person? <laughs> you are not marrying the what. You are not marrying the where. You are not marrying the how. Who mm. is the person? Mm. Because when you know the who, every other thing is extra. True. And so I had a funny experience. I met this guy in church. This guy, when he speaks in tongues, is something else. You don't need to pray again when you hear his tongues. Because his tongues naturally answers to your own prayer. <laughs> his tongues deep. It's the kind of tongue that when you say, Father, give me this kind of tongues. But you see, because I came from a broken home, I was very intentional. I came from a kind of home that was not put together. I saw my dad beat my mom. We were five, were five girls and the second. And I told myself, this one cannot happen for, to me. So I became very intentional. In school, I did not get into a relationship. It was just my personal decision. I wanted to know God more so I can know the people he created. And so I met this guy after school, after I graduated. I was working in a city, speaking tongues. I said, God, you know, I cannot fail in marriage, just like my mom. My mom failed. It's not a pattern that is when I'm a convenient child. And then I met him. He was speaking to me. Ah, many times he would see me off on the road. When he's even on the road like this, and so he go, he will be blasting in tongues. I'm like, ah, ah, can we talk any other thing beyond these tongues? Mm. You know those kind of holy brothers. It was true him. I knew that holiness is not an appearance; it's an attitude. Mm. Mm. And so we're walking on the street like, ah, how far? So as one day as we're walking on the road to cut my to summarize this story, as walking on the road one day, I just said, "Do you have a child?" The guy just started shouting. He said, what do you mean? And will he, how can you ask me such a question? How can you own me? Do you know how close I am to the to, to pastor that you should tell me this? I, I, I said, we're not quarreling. If you go for interview, they ask you a question. It's an answer you give. I just asked you. And the guy was already asking me out. So I should ask questions. So, and then the guy just started shouting. I said, sorry, sorry. That's how we stopped talking. You know. The tongues, he didn't speak. We didn't talk till I got to my house. But you see, you know, there's one thing for you to pray, another thing for you to be positioned to get signals from the Holy Spirit. When I got home, I wasn't moved with his, by his quarrel or his shouts. I went to my closet. I said, Father, you know my heart. I presented the guy to God, his name. And every time I noticed that, my spirit was louder than my flesh. You know, it's not, why, are you, why do you want to say yes to the guy? Your pastor is asking, say, I have peace. Peace from where? Peace from flesh or peace from your spirit? God. Because you can have peace emotionally, but your spirit is restless. Mm, 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 and I said, God, my spirit was louder than my flesh. My flesh was as peace, but my spirit was restless. And I know, when your spirit is restless, it's a red signal. Mm, you need to visit it. Mm. I said, pray. I called this guy again. I always send me a message. I don't like what you did. I was, not, I was not moved. I called him back. I said, tell me the truth. He said, will you stop that? In fact, let's no longer be friends. All those kind of threats, empty threats. I for forgot about him. And then I will see him in church again like that. Anyways, one day, I stopped. I told him, he sent me a message. I wish, let's hang out. I said, no, I don't want to hang out with you. You said, we're no longer friends. We're done. And so one day, he now called me that I wanted to see me. So I said, okay. I went to see him. Went to an eatery. When we sat down there, the guy said, I said, are you ready to answer my question? And I said to me, he said, and the truth is, he actually has a child. Mm. At that time, when I was asking the question with all the to and fro, back and forth, the guy had a child that was 10 years old. But he was lying for months. I said he was lying. Now, imagine if I didn't have the assignments. Mm. Because you see, I didn't check his phone. There was no text message. There was no chats. I didn't look at his WhatsApp. I didn't look at his password. When you pass with the Holy Ghost, he becomes your password. Mm. He assesses the hearts of men. Mm. You don't need to be monitoring. He becomes your monitoring spirits. Mm. And that was how he now... I mean, just from because you see, when you when you bask, there is a witness in your spirits that even you sometimes you can't explain. But you see yourself asking some kind of questions. You see yourself saying some kind of thing, but you cannot understand why you are saying is a spiritual something. Mm. And that was why I asked him the question. And then he said, before after months, he now had to confess 
or is it one of the guys that told me I, I went to his house I saw um, different kinds of alcohol in his fridge and then he said he doesn't drink in public he only drinks in private but well, that was not the case so of course I liked him he was handsome you know and all that kind of stuff that we like so one day I called him on phone I said where are you he said he traveled he went for one job that I know how his job is working an oil company in Nigeria I said okay I kept quiet he sent me a message and this guy used to send me scriptures as morning devotion when you don't know the word of God for yourself you can't design the true word mm. he would send me a message scriptures it was person that made me to start reading Kenneth Hagin's book ah the guy would send me gifts you no know, one can send you gifts of God but don't have the gift inside him mm. so anyway to cut the long story short that was that one day I called him and I said where are you I asked him again I said tell me something who is the woman in your house mm. and then he said ah I don't know I said tell you know how you ask a question you're not in the same environment but the person is confessing see eh? people go to shrine to get concussion when they go and meet a native doctor I don't know if they have native doctors in Cameroon here when they go and a native doctor will tell them carry this in drink the man go sleep the man not go sleep. the man will sleep with you the man won't sleep with you you will do this you will do how much more God Tire where you know his power mm. you can never be confused first john chapter 4 verse 1 he said beloved first john 4 verse 1 beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits spirit of anger spirit of abuse you did not test it you not entered my he beat you i did not know it was like this because you could not test test all spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world you can't test when you do not carry the spirit of God and a lot of us carry the spirit of God but the spirit of God is dormant it's not working it's like a phone app every one of us have different apps on our phones different apps I can have a Bible dictionary on my phone and you have a Bible dictionary on your phone and pastor asks how many of you have a Bible dictionary on your phone? all of us raise up and say ah, we all have a Bible dictionary on your phone but the point is it's not to have it it's who is using it so a lot of us has the Holy Spirit you get to that receive Jesus and the Spirit of God came to you but it's dormant residing somewhere because you do not acknowledge him in all your ways so it's there, it's a app. You always get signal. Your phone is full. Your phone, you want to delete. You look at, ah, should I delete Jesus now? Because the space is too much. Because everything you have been doing is your carnal knowledge. You want to marry, you want to settle that you are running your marriage by carnal knowledge. The Bible says, test all spirit. It is only spirit that can test spirits. Ah. So if you are not a man and a woman of spirit, you will not know. You will fail in marriage. Pastor was saying it. A lot of us in church will say, ah, Apostle was saying it just now. That man, men are bad. Men are this. Men are that. Blame yourself that you lack spirit. Stop blaming people because if you have spirit, you will not make that mistake. Apologies to everyone who had made one error or the other. But today, activate spirits. Go back to your altar. Go back to your prayer altar. Say, God, I want to see your face. I am tired of walking by the flesh. The guy comes and he tells you, let us have sex first to test it to marry. They did not say test flesh. They say test spirit. You see our boldness in relationship meeting. You come and ask question. Is it okay to kiss? You don't have spirit. You don't have. Imagine Jesus is on earth now and wanted to marry. And he's asking that kind of a question. How will you call Jesus? Or Jesus wants to marry, he's confused by the spirit he knows that. It is only spirit that calls to spirit. It is only spirit that the guy will come and say, See, let us go out on a date and you guys sit down. You are meeting for the first time. Your friend is even telling you, I say, ah, 
this guy, man, this guy is tall, dark, handsome, man. Is that car for the guy? You say, yes, it's for the guy. Your friend say, that is the guy. But you, while you are going to have that dinner with the guy, you are praying in the Holy Ghost. You are inviting a third person later. You are the is Sabraka days. You are the only one that knows. It's not my friend. It's not my mother. It's not my father. Their opinion does not matter in this thing. And you get there and you sat down. The moment you shook his hands, <laughs> you shook him. Information started through your head. Yes. Because you are a man of the spirit. You shook him to the point. I said, ah! Eat his food though. Please don't go without eating the food. But when you are done eating the food, tell your friends, that is not the man. That is not the man. I am not confused. That is not the man. When my wife wanted to get married, they were telling her all manner of her mother called her and said, You have a problem. Making a mistake. What are you saying? Look at this guy is walking in Shell. Look at this guy is walking in Chevron. Those oil companies in Nigeria, they are the highest paid. They were the ones following this beautiful damsel. We were in the same church. I couldn't approach her. I bet I could approach her as a friend because of the kind of people that approach her. A church, they called me church rat. Because I was broke, busted, and disgusted. I was squatting in my pastor's house. The only property I had was a laptop. I would not go and approach such a fine woman. So the best she could be with me was friends. And once in a while, I would see her, that, that guy, I said, what of this guy? I said, I left him. What of this guy I left? One day I called her, I said, maybe you are the one that had a problem. Because we just friends, I didn't know why. But when she started opening up some things to me, she told me one day, he said, one of the guys paid flight for me to Lagos, a big city. And when the guy paid, paid for an hotel. And the guy in the night, the guy came into the room and said, Okay, it's time for us to sleep. He was pulling his trouser. And she said, I don't understand. Why would you sleep in my room? She said, hey, The guy said, Everybody do it. You're a big girl. You should understand now. Everybody do it. Everybody do it. My wife said that everybody do it does not mean that I will do it. I don't do it. I uphold purity and I stand by it. That is my call. Nobody is seeing me now. Pastor is not here. It's not about pastor. It's about me. Oh my God. The man was angry. He said, after I finish paying your flight. But my wife said, I can reform. If you had told me you had paid flight to sleep with me, I would have known. And my wife told the man, he said, either you go or I go. But to sleep together is not possible. The man, he shaved, took his clothes and left. The next morning, took her to the airport and she went. And that was the end of that friendship. That was how she was breaking, breaking. She never one day opened her mouth to be saying, eh, all men are the same. Listen now, let me tell you something. When Adam brought animals to Eve, Adam said that there was not found. And he went back to God and God created his Eve. Listen, animals will come before your Eve come. That animals are coming does not mean, does not mean that you have problem. It is the protocol. Animal, lion will come, goats will come. Idiots will come, fool will come, rapists will come, all manner will come. But listen, men who know how to discern that this is an animal, I need a life partner, not an animal. There are those like Adam, they will go back to God in the secret place and begin to pray. These are men that say, I cannot settle for a lion, I cannot settle for a snake. I want to go to God. And when you begin to pray, in the place of prayer, God opens your eyes and He gives you your heave. You now say, This is now the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. We are rounding up. Then my wife, on my own part, I was telling myself I was moved by physicality. I said, I like them big. I like ladies who are my you and that's enough. Hey, some brothers are in my shoes this night. Something to hold that you will not be in the bed and you are looking for your wife. I did 
not know that I was born with physicality. I was moved by my emotions. I was telling God my mind. I did not know I need to go and check the mind of God. I started searching. I entered a quest. I told God when I was going to get married. I started looking, looking. Okay, she has it. She doesn't have it. She has it. I was laboring. I labored and labored. I labored. I couldn't find. One day, I was on my own, frustrated. Because this was the year I said I was going to get married. And I just started talking to God quietly. Father, why is so I have served you faithfully? What is... God said, Have you not considered my daughter Hanwili? With my frontless and backless sheep. <laughs> <laughs> have you not considered my daughter Hanwili? <laughs> it was like I was here Hanwili for the very first time. For God's sake, we've been in church together for three years. We'll be working in the same department several departments together running the youth ministry together but I have never seen now never have I considered as a wife mm. because I was moved by physicality mm. <laughs> I was moved by Asena God said have you considered my daughter and with me? Mm. for the first time my eyes was open and God began to download one will he was to me Hi. see 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 this is something for ladies to catch. See, mm. stop, stop fighting and trying to do curve or no curve. Mm. I was shapeless to a man, but inside of God, I was shaped. Ah! In summary, what she's saying is that don't, stop padding it. Stop adding to it. Stop Don't go for surgery. Doing surgery doing it is not the makeup. If you like, go and join the department and be positioning yourself. It's not about if that. the man is blind, he's blind. he's blind. If God does not open his eyes, he will not see you. Yeah. Don't go and marry in error. Don't force it. Let God begin to do your bidding. She was in another state where God was appearing to me and said, That is my daughter. Go and marry her. Go and marry her. At that point, I said, Kai! Oh, well, he's a wife. Wife! I called her immediately. Did I call her immediately? Before I called her this point, she had called me. I said, Louis, I'm about to give yes to a guy. The story of that guy she told you about. What should I do? I said, now that me want to ask you out now, you're about to give yes to a guy. In his mind, he said, it's in mind. Ah! I said it in my mind. I said, Well, you need to pray. Let God guide you and direct you. She said, Okay, thank you very much for the advice. I said, Okay. Ah! I said, Abi, it was the devil that just spoke to me, not God. Then I called her again. I said, Give me the details of the guy. Let me join you to be praying. She sent the details of the guy, the name of, I said, the full name, the full name. She sent it to me. She didn't know that I was going to Facebook to go and check the guy out. No prayer. So I went to Facebook, typed the guy's name, I saw the guy, wow. This guy is clean. This is, this guy is, this guy is the guy. Ah, no woman should give this man a, a no. She's not going to give this guy a no because the guy is alcoholic. Ah no, all the ladies will marry this kind of a guy. I said, God, it was the, it was devil that spoke to me, not you. A week after she called me, I said, Louis, I gave the guy a no. I said, What? In short, our value increased the more. I said, Where are you? She told me where she was. I went there straight up and I told her, God said you will be my wife. And listen now, because of this segment on her part, because when I was going to ask her out her in marriage, this was my toasting skill. I want to help Cameroon brothers. This
this was my toasting skill I will never forget it I went to meet her straight up I'm too romantic say it first too those of you that don't like church boys church boys are not romantic no you are meant one today I went to meet her straight up I said I'm only I've seen you as a friend I respect you so much but at this point I want to get married to you you see me now I am broke I don't have money I'm squatting in pastor's house I don't have direction but follow me as I follow Christ that's romantic <laughs> are you learning I said follow me as I follow Christ when you marry me I will take you round the that's world that's what he said when you marry me I will take you round the world this was a guy that couldn't afford to go to park bus park to pay for transport to go home when he wants to travel I go along the road to go and get cheap bus this was a guy that when I finished walking in church my body odor is so strong that sometimes you can fall under the anointing by it because I couldn't afford perfume this was a guy that was so broke busted and nothing to show for it and I approached her I said follow me and I will take you around the world and today the prophecy of 11 years ago when he was toasting, wasn't just toasting, was prophet toasting. Prophet ah! and toasting at Brothers, let your prophet toast. Prophet toast. It's a realm in the spirit. You begin to call those things which be not as though they were. True. It's prophet toast. And because the truth is, when a man is following Christ, you cannot use his presence to actually view his future. Mm. Because the more you follow God, the more depths and dimensions of you is being revealed. So if I had looked at his presence at that time, I would have missed out on him and would have missed out on the prophecy for windows. Because none of us ever dreamt of becoming the windows. I wasn't even studying theater arts. He wasn't studying. So we came together because there was an alignment with the Holy Spirit. She could have married a mistake. I could have married a mistake. I could have been an ordinary person because I made a mistake because I was looking for bonbon, Asena and Mayu. That's why a lot of people have made a mistake because of that. You marry wrongly because of physical attraction. But listen, when you surrender your way to God, you can't make mistake. This thing I say it over and over. If you like, say it's pride. You can't make mistake when it comes to your marital destiny. When you align your way with God. Am I talking to somebody? How to have this power? We are around them. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. The Lord of your life. Apostle Paul made a very salient statement. Anytime he's writing the epistle, he will say, I, the prisoner of God. I, the prisoner of Christ. He would always reiterate it every time to distinguish his relationship with Jesus from every other Christian. That was why he was saying it. He was trying to tell you that, you see, this Christian rate, some people run it as democracy. Their relationship with God is democracy. They can vote and unvote Jesus. When it comes to their relationship and married life, they can, uh, at a time, they can put Jesus because he's democracy. But Apostle Paul was giving us a dimension of this Christian work where he was saying there are some people that are prisoners for Christ. These men don't have their will. These men don't have their say. They are lost. They don't do what their emotions feel. They are chained to Christ. People are looking at them and they are mocking them. Hey, look at you. You don't know what's up. You are keeping yourself. They go with the emblem on their head ah, a prisoner of Christ at all that time 
Apostle Paul will say, I, a bond servant. And if you hear that word, a bond servant, a bond servant is one who willingly give himself to slavery to the master. A bond servant is one that has gained freedom to go. You have served your master for years. But only you by yourself and say, Master, I go no yet. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. They surrender to their master. And they say, I will continue to remain slave. If you say go, I go. If you say come, I come. I don't have a will of myself. Are you a born servant? You are in all, you are, you are singing in church, praising God. People celebrate your voice. Wow! But your heart does not show that you are a born servant. In church, you saw Jesus. At night, when you go outside, you are with a girl. Are you a born servant? You truly cannot experience the supernatural if you are not a born servant. You will never see God walking you and through you if you are not a born servant. If you like, keep doing democracy. In this kingdom, there is no democracy. It is lordship. It is lordship. We surrender to the will of God. We look at pornography and we turn it and say, Ah! I am crucified with Christ. It's not I that live anymore. Left for me, I will fornicate. But it is not me that live anymore. Left for me, I will stay glue in Paul. But it is not I that live anymore. Left for me, I will marry you under your condition that we should be having sex. But it is not I that live anymore. See, I'm feeling what you are feeling. I have emotions. As I'm talking to you right now, there is erection. But you see, I can't go any further because it is not I that live anymore. It is Christ that I live through me. I carry the banner of God anywhere I go. Whether you laugh me or you mock me, whether you scorn me, a prisoner of Christ. God is calling every one of you today. Many of you have lost in, you have lost out in the assignment God has given to you because you are walking on a fast lane. Many of you are priests. You are prophets. You are intercessors in the kingdom. Your life was meant to be weakness in this kingdom. You were meant to be a terror to the kingdom of darkness. But now you are now a slave under demonic oppression because you have lost your identity in Christ. Today we are going back to where we came from and say, Jesus, ah, I am a prisoner for you. It's not what is popular. It's not what is trendy anymore. It's that I am lost for you. There is a calling to the old rugged cross. That Jesus, it is only your way that I know. There is no other way. Wherever you are, can you just rise up and begin to pray? Jesus, when you are here, 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 when when you are the here, power of God is in this place. It is calling men, it is calling women. Begin to fly from your head. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here.
not stand up. Begin to touch them now. These ones you have called to yourself. Begin to touch them now. Let the fire of God begin to go around this building. Begin to touch them. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Begin to receive your stuff. of speaking in tongues God will begin to change your tongues in this place there is fire everywhere there is angels to give except you are not ready to receive are you ready just begin to pray begin to pray father I need this power I need this signs I need this power don't begin to cry to God now I need it I am tired of living by the flesh I need this power
in Jesus name you have cried to God it is time to receive please I beg you don't be a spectator I beg you I beg you even in this atmosphere there is transference of spirit you have to be careful focus on Jesus there is someone under the sound of my voice God is beginning to open your eyes you are a seer you are a seer but unfortunately that gift has been kept in one corner but as I speak I see God, the angel of God bringing oil over your head it's an anointing that is coming on you now. Now, 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 now. It's an anointing. 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 It's going to be so strong. So strong. So strong.
let go. God is resonating it again. He said, my sons and daughters are here that need healing. That I need to take that body from them because I want to start something new. You're in that category, can you come? You're in that category. There is healing in this place. There is healing in this place. There is healing. There is healing. You can't forgive your father. You can't forgive that boyfriend. He broke your heart. He messed you up. You were abused. You were abused. And you couldn't let go. There is healing. Where are they? Please come. Just come here, please. You couldn't just let go. You were raped at one time or the other. Please stand up. No, stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. There is healing. There is healing. There is healing and restoration in this place there is healing and restoration in this place is a new beginning for you it's a new beginning for you there is healing there is healing there is healing I'm not just healing I'm not just healing you I am giving you a voice don't fear the Lord I am giving you a voice
from my body. Out from my body in the name of Jesus. This body belongs to Jesus. It belongs to Jesus. It belongs to Jesus. In the name of Jesus.